All right, today we're going to talk about Robinia pseudoacaceae, uh, commonly referred to as black locust. Uh, other names for black locust, uh, yellow locust, uh, shipmast locust, uh, but mostly just black locust. And so I want to talk about that. I want to, to focus on on the uses of it and why we grow it here. In All right, so here here in uh, North Idaho, we uh, we grow quite a bit of black locust. We have it on our property. Now it is not. Uh, native to our area, but it is naturalized. And uh, you know, kind of the the theory goes is that the the old homesteaders came out this way, out west in the 1800s, and they brought black locust seeds with them. And they planted it because it was so useful for things like fence posts and lumber and firewood, etc. It was just a great overall useful tree, and it is. And so we're going to talk about that. Uh, but it is not native. It's more native to the eastern United States, the Appalachian Mountains. It's kind of you know, you know famous for, um, you know, and this tree is often considered to be a, a an invasive or a weedy tree. And I think that really depends on on uh, where you're at. I mean, in some areas, it you know it, it literally grows like weeds, meaning it does really well and it spreads fast, and so there it might be a problem. And another reason why people consider it weedy or invasive is because it suckers, okay? So it grows from, it rhizo rhizonomously, okay? So it grows from the roots and they'll pop up these suckers and so you'll end up with a thicket of black locusts. Now for us, I think that's great. And so with that, growing into say a thicket means, hey, we can cut it down, we can coppice it or pollard it and it's gonna grow back. In fact, it's gonna grow back more vigorously. One of the reasons why we have it in our system so we can do that. And that kind of leads me into another great use for it is firewood. It is prized as a firewood. It has really high BTUs. Um, and in fact, you know, here out west in Idaho, Pacific Northwest, you know, we don't have a lot of the, the hardwoods of the eastern deciduous forest. Okay, we are, our bioregion is conifer forest. We do have um, we do have deciduous trees. We do have quote-unquote hardwoods. <laughs> they're not they're not like the eastern deciduous hardwood forests. Um, so our firewood for us, you know, our, our our prized firewood are things like western larch, dug fir. You know, that's our high BTU firewood. Now, you know, you can there's birch as well, and there there is. Um, of course, you can burn pines as well, and people do here all the time. They burn pine. It just doesn't have as much, it doesn't have as high a BTU, so you, it burns faster. It creates a little bit more creosote. You need to cre clean out your stoves more often. Okay, so people do it, um, but you know it's not the prized stuff. Okay, so you're paying pr the premium, or you're looking for you know to cut down the, the dug fir, the western larch, for firewood. Well, black locust actually has higher BTUs th than those. And, it's close, actually, with, with those two, it's, but it's a little bit higher, depending on, of course, the, uh, the chart you may be looking at. And, and I, obviously, there's going to be variability on specific trees, uh, species, age, etc. Uh, but either way, in a, a, as a general rule of thumb, it's high BTU wood, good firewood. Um, but that's at a, a little bit older stage. Okay, so we can't, we're not going to cut this down and get anything out of it out, out of sight of a, maybe a, a rocket stove, right? It'd probably be great for that. Um, so, so as a firewood, it's awesome. So, we, but you could probably do 10 year rotations on this or 15 year rotations where if you had a, basically a black locust planting or a, a large thicket, you could, you could be taking down trees every 10 or 15 years. They're going to come back and then those could be used for firewood, so you have kind of an endless supply, supply of high BTU firewood. As opposed to cutting down your conifers like dug fir, western larch, where um, you need to either get, you know, let the seedlings go or, or you know, replant, that kind of thing. So you, you kind of, you know, you're creating your own perpetual supply of firewood, so that would be a, an awesome use for it, and that's what we're hoping to do. Um, now, Fodder. Let's talk about fodder, because you know if you if you look at black locusts and you talk to a lot of people, especially in permaculture type systems, they'll talk about that uh, black locust as fodder for animals. And it's really kind of an interesting, maybe a little controversial topic, because the reality is is that you could do a Google search right now 
for black locust fodder. And you're going to get all kinds of hits. You're going to get all kinds of uh, accounts of people using black locust as fodder for animals, for rabbits, for goats, uh, for chickens, you know, whatever. And I tend to agree with that. Okay, I tend to agree with that. And in fact, I have, I have uh, experimented a little bit with giving goats black locust leaves. Okay, and they did fine. They loved it and they ate it, you know, but it was it was so such a little amount that I can't definitively say, oh, it's it's um you know, it's not it's great, it's it's awesome as fodder and it's not toxic at all, etc. Okay, because that's the other side of this is that you could Google black locust toxic and you'll get all kinds of hits. You'll get all kinds you'll get studies and things like that on both sides. Okay, so it's kind of, in my mind it's a little bit inconclusive. I don't think that there's any issue if, if you know, you were giving animals a little bit of this. I don't think it's a problem. I don't think it would be toxic at level. That's just a personal opinion on that. Um, in my mind, it's not conclusive. Uh, but I, I certainly wouldn't, at this point, you know, taking a precautionary approach, I, I wouldn't try and do something like, you know, feed them all, you know, leaves from black locusts. I'm going to, you know, make the black locust hay, dry it and store it for winter and, and give it them as a sole source of food, right? I just don't know for sure. There's too many conflicting accounts. Uh, but a little bit here and there, I don't see a problem with trying it. Uh, maybe you've tried it, or if you know something, let me know, please. Also, um, black locust, another great, it, it is basically a pollinator tree. I mean, it is a prized pollinator tree. It is awesome. When it flowers, and I'm going to show you a tree that, that is flowering right now, a black locust tree that's flowering. That, those f flowers are fragrant. They're very fragrant. Um, uh, bees, all, native pollinators love it. They love it. They love to basically harvest pollen from it. So in my mind, it's a fodder tree for bees. They, they are, are harvesting from it. It's also the flowers are edible at that stage. They are... Um, uh, they are very edible. They're they're sweet to taste, uh, and they're good. You just got to make sure, hey, hey you know, um, don't eat too many of them because they're obviously the the piece that produces that seed pod. Okay, so um, you want to be careful with that. But they are they're delicious. All right. So um, also, you know, like I said earlier, prized for its rot resistance. Fence posts. Um, you know, the famous. You know, and I've I've actually read some of the some of the old USDA studies when they when they actually did trials with the, even the different varieties of Robinia, um, you know, the ship mass locust, the the black locust, the yellow locust, and different or common locust, I should say, and they did different trials and they got various uh, results with regards to rot resistance, and they were all really good as far as you know rot. That's what they were testing. It's like this is a very rot resistant wood let's do trials and figure out how you know how rot resistant it really is again a lot of conflicting information out there so i'm not even going to bother trying to give you like oh it's a fence post that will last 100 years or 50 years or 25 years okay it'll last a long time it, it was it was prized for that for a long time and it still is in certain places it's prized for its um ability to be a good fence post, a good rot resistant fence post. You know, it, it would be used in place of uh, basically treated lumber for fence posts. Okay, it's that rot resistant. Okay, so it's it's great. And like I said, the other thing is that it, it's reproducibility. We talked about this, you can coppice it, pollard it, it's gonna sucker. So it, it's, um, it can be prolific on the right site. So we'll see here, it's growing well here. Um, at least most of them that I planted from little bare root trees are doing well. We'll see how they do over time. This guy is only a couple years in the ground and it's probably, you know, eight or nine feet. That's not huge. Uh, there's people that have reported much more growth than that. And maybe it'll take off at some point. We'll see. But I'm, I'm pretty happy with it uh, for now. So now I want to I just show you a little bit about the locust as far as identification. Okay, here's a, here's a look at our our black locust tree here. We've got it planted a, on this you know this this little swale on the downside. We've never watered this thing. We've never done anything with it at all. And it's growing well for us. So let's take a look at uh, you know the tree itself, some of the characteristics. 
you know, famous, famous black locust has got these two uh, um, thorns. Okay, they get to be about an inch long. There they are. There, there's usually two at the base of each leaf. Okay, and we'll talk about that here in just a second. Okay, now the, uh, the honey locust has um, three. I think. Don't quote me on this, but it's like Trichanthus or so. But anyway, it's got tri in the uh, the scientific name. That lets you kind of that there's three thorns okay so the black locust has these characteristic two so and it also has much smaller leaflets than the black locust so you can see these you know and again this is a real young tree but basically all of that from my fingers down that's all one leaf okay and those are all leaflets so in this one in particular we have let's see two four six eight ten twelve thirteen leaflets and i think I think that black locust typically has somewhere between 7 and 23, something like that. And it is this compound leaf. They're, this is char very characteristic of uh, nitrogen fixing trees in general, but black locust. Uh, it's odd, called odd pinnate, and each leaflet is ovate or kind of that oval shape. Okay. And then um, other than that, that's one thing that I'll talk about real quick. It's a nitrogen fixing tree. Okay. So it's, uh, it's kind of like growing. Uh, a bean or a pea or alfalfa, you know, to fix nitrogen. Now that is dependent upon if there's the right bacteria in the soil, rhizobium, and whatever other bacteria it needs to actually fix that nitrogen and make that exchange. It doesn't happen all by itself. Uh, but, you know, that's, I assume that it's probably fixing nitrogen, right? But it does depend on whether or not that bacteria is present. And so, the, you know, that's a, a huge, huge plus for us. And so we, we grow this tree, it, it fits well in our system. It seems to be um, doing well. And we will, we will coppice this at uh, some point, probably um, on something like a 10 year rotation, you know, in general, we'll see. So we've also got it planted in our edible forest garden and I'll show you a little bit about that. Okay, so here's another one of our black locusts on our property, just a real small uh, tree here. You can see this one's flowering. That's why I wanted to show you this one. They, they form in these clusters down here, as you can see. And I'm not gonna pull a bunch of them off, but um, you can see a beautiful flower, very fragrant, smells great, and they're edible. Okay, so these, these flowers right here are edible. And they're good. They're really good. Smells good. This is incredible bee fodder, as I mentioned before. You know, as far as uh, bees love these trees. And um, just an awesome tree, especially in, here in our uh, edible forest garden. Great addition. Okay, so one, one quick last little story about black locust. Here's a, a little seedling that I grew from seed. And uh, I grew it out last year. And it was doing terrible. It was doing horribly. In fact, I thought it was dead. And, and it ended up over this last winter. It was in a pot. It was like kicked over. And it ended up with a bunch of, just back down there in this area here. I had a bunch of pots here. But it was like laying over on its side. And I thought it was just, just there. Okay, it was just being, that pot was being stored there. And then I, I went over and picked it up the other day. It hasn't been watered, nothing, and this is what I found. So, <laughs> so I guess this guy's going to end up getting planted. Okay, so last last word on uh, black locust. Make sure you do your own research. Of course, you know you're going to find some conflicting information out there on what on whether it's fodder or whether it's the BTUs in the wood, the toxicity. Um, you're going to find. Uh, you know, well, on what how is nitrogen and what does that mean as far as you know to plants around it? But the bottom line is, it's a great plant, and I think it um, it fits well within a, a lot of people's systems. And of course, you have to do the uh, do the analysis on your site to find out if it's going to work for you. But I'm pretty excited to have this on our property and looking forward to see it mature even more.